Hey everyone, today we're going to be covering 10 interesting facts about Watto. Let's start with number one. He was a slave owner. The male Toydarian Watto had little regard for having human slaves. Though he did live on the desert world of Tatooine, where slavery was mainly socially acceptable, Shmi Skywalker and her young son, Anakin, were his property and they spent many years doing taxing work for the materialistic junk dealer. Though he felt little remorse for his slaves compared to other slave owners, he was less cruel and was generally regarded as a decent owner, though everything is relative. But he did grant little Anakin an early day off when Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn and Padme, who is disguised as the Naboo Queen's handmaiden, came to Tatooine. Number two, he didn't mind risking Anakin's life for profit. Anakin was an incredible skilled pilot, something Watto took note of when the boy became a pod race enthusiast. So, despite his mother's protests, the Toydarian began to make wages and put the boy in a very dangerous sport. Now, only because Anakin was so strong in the force was he able to actually participate and survive. And even then, the young boy lost every race until the Bunta Classic. Watto put Anakin in the races, he always bet against him, picking the reigning champion, the male Doug Sebulba. As long as Anakin lost, Watto got richer. So do you think it was Anakin's skills that won the race? Or could Qui-Gon have done something with the Force? Number three, he was a war criminal. Before his career as a junk dealer trafficker, Watto had actually been a soldier. On his home world of Toydaria, his people suffered through many famines through the decades, which caused numerous revolutions and raids across his planet. During these conflicts, Watto had been a member of the Osiki Confederacy Army, a unit infamous for using chemical warfare on other Toydarian groups, so their food supply would be annihilated. Their reasons weren't strategic, but instead done out of spite. If the Osiki army couldn't eat the food, why should the other Toydarian groups get to? This way they all suffered together. Eventually though, due to debilitating injuries, Watto had to leave his home world. Number four, he beat Anakin up. When Anakin was just around three or four years old, Watto purchased him and his mother. Though his memory may be vague of those early years in his servitude, Anakin did recall that while he was around the age of four, Watto had beaten him severely for displeasing him. Again, since Watto was considered to be less ruthless than the other masters, this stood out in the young Skywalker's memory, as it was a rare occurrence. Yet he still beat up a toddler and kept Anakin and Shmi a slave for years. So the Toydarian certainly played his part in leaving the scars in Anakin that would one day take him down the path of darkness. Number five, he's a cheat. Watto purposely targets off-worlders as they are easier to swindle because they would have no knowledge of the market prices in Mos Espa, the Tatooine city where Watto kept his shop. Nor does he have an issue with cheating, as when Qui-Gon wanted to make a wager with the Toydarian for Anakin's freedom in the Boon to Eve pod race, Watto deliberately used a chance cube that was divided between red and blue like lightsabers. The red color would mean he would wager Shmi Skywalker and the blue was for Anakin. As the Toydarian considered Shmi a less valuable slave than Anakin, he chose the color red for her because he had loaded the chance cube with that color so that it would always come up red. But when to his surprise the die lands on blue, the slave owner can barely contain his anger. Qui-Gon had used the force to change the outcome condemning Shmi to a continued life of slavery, but saving her son, Anakin, from it, if he won the pod race, that is. Ironically, if he had adhered to the Jedi Code and let the die land where it may, there would be no Darth Vader or Galactic Empire. At least, not the way it went. Number six, he went back on his word. After the Bunta Classic and Anakin had defeated Sebulba, Watto tried to rescind the beat. He doesn't want to surrender his most vulnerable slave. It's only when Qui-Gon has to threaten to get the Huts involved that Watto relinquishes the boy to the Jedi Master. Though Watto still made out nicely, Qui-Gon had offered him all the winnings, minus the cost of the spaceship parts, if Anakin was the victor of the pod race. Had the boy lost, Watto would not only have kept his slave, but also gotten Qui-Gon's ship. Number seven, he hired a hit on Qui-Gon Jinn. A female hut named Gardula the Hut approached Watto after having seen Anakin's winning pod race. Impressed by the human child, she offered Watto an incredible amount of credits for the boy, not realizing Anakin was no longer the Toydarians to sell. Not wanting to reveal that to the hut, Watto asks for time to consider her generous offer. He then quickly hires thugs to convince Qui-Gon to return Anakin to him. In other words, he arranged for a hit on the Jedi. Of course, Qui-Gon easily handled the thugs and Watto had to let Anakin go. Number eight, he grew close to Anakin's mother. After Anakin Skywalker left with Qui-Gon to follow his destiny, Watto's business suffered without the young boy's mechanical genius, as it was now just Shmi and him, and the two began to grow friendlier with each other as time went by. Later, Watto made a trip to Mos Eisley, where he soon heard news of the invasion of Naboo, 
and the fate of Qui-Gon Jinn. When he returned to his junk shop, he told Shmi the bad news. Again, the Toydarian whined over Anakin's departure, arguing that the boy would have been much safer had he remained with him. Shmi then spent a hundred credits, which isn't easy for a slave to get their hands on, to send a message to the Jedi Council on Coruscant, though Watto did recover 10% of the cost. In her message to the Jedi, Shmi inquired about what happened to Anakin after the Battle of Naboo, but the Jedi never answered back, which outraged Watto, as he had become increasingly melancholy after Anakin's departure. Seeing how depressed Shmi was about her son's absence, Watto feared she would try to escape, so without telling her, he deactivated her transmitter chip, and he'd rather risk losing her than having Shmi die. Number 9. He was alone. However, when a local moisture farmer named Klieg Lars kept coming by the shop to befriend the smitten Shmi Skywalker, they approached him together about buying her freedom for a substantial amount, far more than the standard value of a slave. Though the credits were more than generous and it was also Shmi's desire, the Toydarian refused because he was afraid of being completely alone. He even went so far as to take her to the other moisture farmers so she could see what a difficult life it would be. But when Lars offered even more for Shmi, his greed trumped his fear, and he finally relented. Though it could also be that part of him that wanted her to be happy. Even with the large sum of money, Watto's junk shop continued to deteriorate as now he had neither Skywalker, which left him both financially and emotionally in the hole. Number 10 can be seen in this video here which covers Vader and the possible, well, most possible, murder of Watto by Vader's hands. In Legends, of course. I'll link that video down below for you, and I'll also put a snippet of it at the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed these really interesting facts about Watto. He's a very fascinating character, and there's a lot more to him than just meets the eye. Leave a like on this one if you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of your day. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. The information comes from the book Jedi vs. Sith, The Essential Guide to the Force, and it's from Vader's actual journal himself. Both Huts and Toydarians possess varying degrees of mental strength that can make them immune to Jedi mind tricks. In an event from the year 4 ABY that has since become the stuff of legend, Luke Skywalker found himself unable to mentally persuade Jabba the Hutt to release rebel prisoners and had to resort to a backup plan. A personal log of Darth Vader, recovered from his fortress on Vun, revealed Vader's disturbing perspective regarding Tordarians. It should be noted that Vader's disposition may have been influenced by Anakin Skywalker's relationship to Watto, the Toydarian junk dealer and slaver who was young Anakin's master on Tatooine. Although Shmi Skywalker's recovered journal suggests that Watto was a relatively benevolent master, it is conceivable that Vader's memories of Watto were unfavorable. Furthermore, the identity of the Toydarian subject mentioned in Vader's recording remains unknown, but recordings from Tatooine preclude the possibility that it was Watto. And here is the piece from Vader's actual journal. These creatures have become such an irritation that every time I see one, I want to strike it down with my lightsaber. Be that as it may, I interviewed a Toydarian subject who showed a great amount of resistance to force suggestion, up to the point that I created physical discomfort. I found that they can be easily intimidated by a demonstration of strength, and it proved relatively simple to cause it to expire, merely by making it... Oh.